the origin of demons where do demons come from i'm going to share with you four different views and my personal view on where the demons come from but the most important thing from the beginning that i want to mention is that we are not actually very clear on where the demons come from we are clear on where they're going according to matthew 25 verse 41 it says that he will also say to those who are on the left hand depart from me you cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels so we are very clear the demons are going to hell they will have their part in the lake of fire with satan and we are also very clear that we are commissioned empowered and anointed to drive them out as christians we are given the authority and the tools to resist demons and to expel them out of other people and we can also see them removed from ourselves but a lot of times people are wondering so where did they actually come from and so i'm going to share with you four views that are kind of dominant concerning this topic the first one is that or demon spirits are spirits of evil men and women this is more of a pagan belief because bible tells us that once you die this your spirit you know goes and awaits trial after death your spirit doesn't roam around it is appointed for a man to die and then there's judgment according to hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 so this is definitely not scriptural but some people especially in pagan cultures believe that e demons evil spirits are simply spirits disembodied spirits of evil men and evil women but scripture really um, debunks that view the second view that demons are disembodied spirits from pre from pre-adamic race this view is really based on the gap theory that there is a gap between genesis 1 and genesis 1 and 2 there's this ruin and reconstruction that happened and the problem is the gap theory is not really found anywhere in the scriptures pretty much what it says is that god created the world perfect and then something just happened you know that there was a lot of stuff going on and this world that existed before the world that we know of today the genesis 1 and 2 that this world was destroyed and that's where satan fell and then people that lived in that world they died and their spirits are roaming around trying to get possession of a human body the problem is that we don't see that anywhere in the bible in fact bible is very clear in genesis chapter 2 verse 4 that this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day the lord god made the heavens and the earth or the earth and the heavens and so bible is actually very clear that the history we have of this earth and of the heavens that we have today is outlined in genesis 1 and 2 and there is no application or implication that there was some kind of other world and humanity or race that existed before adam now the most common view on where the demons came from the view number three is the demons are the fallen angels there that were cast from heaven with satan christians typically assume that demons are the fallen angels cast from heaven uh, with satan right before temptation of adam and eve and this scripture really comes from revelation chapter 12 verses 4 5 and 6 but if you read those verses in context you will see that it deals with a imaginary um, dragon who was cast down from heaven and his tail dragged you know one third of the stars and that story is sandwiched right before or right in the middle around the occurrence the event of the birth of Jesus and so we know that Satan fell from heaven before the birth of Jesus and so but that story is really used to apply that that's probably what it refers to Satan falling and then that's when he took one-third of angels since it deals with one-third of stars but it's not actually very clear and that's the only verse in the Bible that refers to one-third of angels one-third of stars following the dragon and so Christians really kind of use that version and apply that to most likely this is where Satan fell from heaven before the creation of Adam and Eve and he took one-third of angels with him and this tradition really comes from an English poet John Milton in his epic you know writing Paradise Lost there's a lot of also inconsistencies with that um, and we're going to look at the view four to kind of compare this the view four is that demons are the disembodied spirits of the dead nephilim giants who perished at the time of the great flood we know one thing is that demons are different than angels now the view number four concerning the demons are the disembodied spirits of the dead nephilim giants who perished at the time 
of the great flood. Now I'm gonna have a separate video about the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 but let's just read right now Genesis chapter 6 verse 4 about the sons of God. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Now the view that demons are the disembodied spirits of the dead Nephilim the, the Nephilim being the descendants, the offspring of this hybrid union between the sons of God, these fallen angels or these angels, these divine beings and the daughters of men. This view is really supported by the book of Enoch. Now the book of Enoch is not in the Bible, it's not part of the canon, but it is the book that a lot of Jewish people reference to including Peter and Jude. And I'm going to read to you directly from book of Enoch and what he says and also book of Enoch was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls 1st Enoch 15 8 through 12 and now the giants who were produced from the spirits angels and flesh they shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they were born from men and from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin they shall be evil spirits on earth and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which shall be born on the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against of the women, because they have proceedings from them, from the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants, from the souls of those flesh the spirits, having gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment. Now being in the ministry of deliverance and having done deliverance and seeing deep obsession that demons have with inhabiting the body. I am leaning more toward this view for a few reasons, not just from the book of Enoch, but I've observed this in the scriptures and through the ministry of deliverance that we see in Daniel chapter 9 verse 21 that angels have wings. But in Matthew 12 43 we see that demons they walk. Angels they fly, demons walk on the earth. We see that angels they inhabit the heavenlies. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, Jude 6, Revelation 12 verse 7 and 8 and we see that demons are earth bound. They are roaming on the earth. We also see that angels have bodies of their own and they do not normally desire to occupy another body. In fact angels can shape shift they can appear in whatever body they want. We see this uh, of God's angels. They would show up in a human body. They didn't possess a body to appear as human. But demons, they desire to inhabit a body. Of course their preference is a human body, but they can even inhabit a a, an animal body like we see demons, they possess animals. Now why is that? Why is there such a deep desire for a body? Maybe perhaps because they lived in the body before. Maybe perhaps because they inhabited a body before. And so a lot of scholars and also quite few deliverance ministers that I know that they subscribe to this view that demons are really just the disembodied spirits of the dead Nephilim. It also would make sense why they have deep desire an intense craving for sexual immorality. Like we see that they were birthed, they were born between these spirit beings cohabitating and having a relationship, sexual, sexual relationship with the human beings. And so these giants, these Nephilims were the hybrid between the divine and the human. And so they had both, they had pretty much human, they lived in a human body, but they were hybrid of those, of between the two worlds. And so now that they are seeking back to get into a human body. They seek to possess it and they're perverted, they're messed up. Like if you would read the book of Enoch and, and some other sources and these Nephilims on the earth, they ate humans. They did very disgusting, crazy stuff. They were really perverted and there was a lot of craziness and violence that was happening on this earth as a result of these Nephilims. It's one of the reasons why God wiped the during the flood the whole earth. It wasn't just because humanity was so evil. I mean, come on, let's face it. A lot of humanity didn't get better after that. You know, um, there were a lot of 
intersections of our human race and human time during human time where humans did a lot of really evil things but this time during Genesis chapter 6 the evil that was happening there it wasn't just humans I believe truly that it was these offsprings a high of hybrid union between women and divine beings and they were extremely big and they were eating people destroying people also sharing you know celestial intelligence with humans and teaching them different things about sorcery about stars and and all of these things that caused God to say you know what they're gonna destroy the human race and so I have to wipe them out now it doesn't matter honestly where they came from and this is not a salvation issue so we might disagree with it and that's completely fine where they came from and honestly I might even change my position 10 years down the road that's why I say that I think that this is where they came from I'm not 100% sure and Jesus never made it clear about where they came from we do know that they are darkness we do know that we are called to cast them out and we do know that they are not part of the light and we do know that they're not going to be saved or redeemed and we do know where they're headed and they're headed into the lake of fire with their ruler their king of darkness Satan and the devil and so I want to encourage you that God called you to cast out demons I want to encourage you to wage spiritual warfare and I want to encourage you not to give them any place in your life these evil spirits because they have extreme passions drives and intense desires to destroy humanity and to fill themselves with this immorality defiled things and so once they get possession or once they oppress and or they get access to your life you know they have this intense cravings and that's why a lot of people who are demonized they say you know something like I feel like something in me just wants to see that wants to do that wants to act this way it's because these beings they have this you know unsatisfiable desire for impure ungodly godless profane forbidden things and that's why deliverance is essential thank you for watching this video i hope you learned something and uh, hey drop that in the comment below what do you think what do you think demons are from what do you think what what is your view um has this video you know made you realize something else or think about something else uh, toward this topic and uh but please be nice in the comments below okay this is this is not time to get nasty we may disagree on this and disagree um respectfully okay thank you for doing that and also don't forget to subscribe click like to the video smash that like button on the video and then turn on the bell so that you can be reminded each time we go live and and final thing guys check out below the video we have a products my wife has a store called Subject store where we offer our merchandise if this becomes of benefit to you check it out this is one of the ways that you can help to support her and to support our ministry thank you until next time